Hello, every folks, and good morning. So I want to talk about something I'm super excited about today, uh, which is that, uh, yeah, Knight of Lotus got another rebalance mod, and uh, I gotta say, so far, I am adoring this thing. Um, now, look, I will say I, I definitely have to go re-explore, you know, rebalanced, according to a few folks, but uh, this, is a, this is a new one that apparently came out in December, just kind of quietly squeaked on in there that I just completely missed. Um, known as, uh, as Somebody to Love. Uh, well, technically the full title is Lancelot Somebody to Love, but you know what? It, it's it's somebody. It's Tactic Soaker Somebody to Love in my book. Um, I mean, it. so basically the idea here is that they took all the old good stuff from Knight of Lotus, they kept all that in there, but they've completely redone so much of it in a way that makes a, an absolute ton of sense. Uh, in many ways, this is kind of a grown-up version of Knight of Lotus, uh, so to speak. Uh, so, for example, you can't really out-level stuff. Everything always scales with you. Honestly, in many cases, I kind of feel many of these uh, games would honestly be a hell of a lot better without a level system whatsoever, but whatever. Um, anyway, so point being, it scales with you. Um, there's different formations that are added all over the place. The old tricks still work but there's just new stuff to play around with, and that feels awesome. Like, new formations, like the fact that you may notice we're at the Formido fight here, and I've just gone ahead and recruited the Valkyrie they had on hand. Um, there's a lot of cool little things, like, for example, certain classes are, uh, are going to be better at recruiting certain people. There's kind of like a built-in situational arbitration in, in many cases. Um, things like, uh, supposedly, somebody said the multiplayer... Uh, emblems are available somehow. I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate or not, but either way. Um, basically, new formations was what uh, really uh, got me interested in this one, but uh, but yeah, the new passives on classes have just been a fun thing, but it's it's been one of these things where, like, the changes are not super egregious. There's just enough, like, little nudges in the right directions to make certain things stick out a lot more, like... For example, with your starting formations, your ninjas starting off with Nightmare instead of an elemental spell, giving you, a, giving you a nice little guaranteed overhead and a sleep move available early. At the same time, nobody removed the, you know, something like the Dragon Shield there. And at the same time, stuff like uh, Glycinia always showing up with her best stuff, meaning that you can do dumb nonsense like, for example, your overpowered uh, early fist guy, uh, while also having, you know, two Seraph's plumes on him and stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's been really, really pleasant so far. Um, I've really been adoring this thing. It, it also basically means that due to this whole situational arbitration deal, uh, you can actually have cases where it's reasonable to expect to get a witch early. Um, you get stuff like, uh, where's my cleric at? Uh, like, for example, you know how, um, you know how playing through Night of, Night of Lotus the first time, I guarantee you probably have that feeling where you found the dowsing rod and you're like, man, that's kind of a cool item. I wish I could have found this like a dozen hours ago. And uh, you basically get it immediately from Mullen. Uh, she's just carrying the thing around. Uh, for, for those that don't know, it's an item that basically uh, tells you how many hidden items are left on a stage. It's like it's one of those things that's so oddly specific that you realistically probably wouldn't use it that much. But still, you know, it's nice to have in the early game uh, more than anything. But either way... Uh, absolute gem of a mod so far. Um, I've been really loving it. Like, really, when I look at a mod, in a lot of cases, it's going to come down to the mentality that I'm feeling from that mod as to whether I like it. And in this case, you can tell that this is somebody who has played an absolute ton of uh, KOL and, like, they just, they were on the same wavelength of, like, I wish this thing was over here, wish this thing was over here. Like for Mido, for example, with the uh, formations and things, um, we're looking at a case where uh, they had um, they had extra units show up, they had tougher units show up, um, they gave you early access to a Valkyrie over here, and then also, I mean, the Valkyrie might be potentially overpowered, but whatever, we'll see how that goes. Um, but then at the same time, we had two extra archers showing up there on the ramparts. Uh, it feels like you're kind of expected to play this one in a more permadeath rule set kind of thing, because I haven't seen any... Um, I've only seen the starting altars. I haven't seen anything beyond that in terms of the um, uh, like reviving options and things like that. Um, new passives, like I said, get added to new units that needed something. Like, for example, basic soldiers, instead of being something you promote out of, uh, basically will slightly scale their um, uh, their uh, their strength and stuff like that um, as their health goes down. So they're kind of your uh, RTSR unit in a way. Um, you have stuff like uh, archers. They they didn't get a massive bump in terms of their power. It's a, I, I think they said it was a very, very slight strength growth change, 
but they have a bonus versus stuff like griffins. Um, so anything with wings, they're going to hit harder against, which is just a nice little cool, flavorful change. This is the same kind of stuff that got me excited for One Vision, where it's like it's clear that they're they're trying to keep it sane, they're trying to keep it good, and then like they're adding these nice little meaty details here. Um, and so far, it's resulted in a much more strategic uh, experience in my in my book here. I've been really, really loving it. Um, um, definitely uh, been nice to see uh, just like little change, just all these little changes that as soon as you see them, it's like, man, that, that's uh, that's a that's a nice little touch, you know. Um, it's it's been a pretty constant experience as far as that goes. So, anyways, go ahead and give it a go. Um, it's very easy to patch. Just something to bear in mind. Um, that, so this will work with whatever version you've got. I don't think there were any particularly different versions for Knight of Lotus as far as ROMs go. Um, I know I was able to just dump my original GBA one and it modded just fine, so you don't have to have some weird, oddly specific version or whatever else. Um, but uh, something to bear in mind is that it does u use uh, UPS instead of IPS. Uh, a lot of uh, GBA uh, um, um, uh, mods will use IPS instead. So just kind of bear that in mind uh, that you would need a different uh, patcher than maybe you're used to. Uh, either way... Give this mod a go. Give a uh, you know. Give these guys <laughs> some attention, and hopefully we'll see uh, more stuff uh, coming out uh, for stuff like this. Um, I did a a stream of it a little. Well, I say a little bit ago, but yesterday. Um, I don't know how many folks actually saw that. Um, I, I don't actually know how the videos from those things are actually showing up because I can't help but uh, but notice the algorithm got very mad as soon as I started doing those. So. I don't know. This platform is mysterious to me. Um, anyway, give this mod a try. Give it a go. Definitely one of those ones that's worth your love here. So, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next one. And, uh, and yeah, go revisit some Night of Lotus. This game is an absolute gem. Alright, see you then.